Let's look at a few other things you might find around a ham shack or a test bench that uh, might be used and uh, need to be checked every once in a while to make sure they're still functioning correctly. We'll start out with a ham radio type low pass filter. This is a uh, professional filter. I'm not sure whether it will handle a kilowatt, but certainly it'll handle several hundred watts. And it rolls off at about 50 megahertz. Uh, well, actually around um, 40 megahertz and is used for the HF amateur bands. Once again, we're s sweeping from 1 to 500 megahertz. We don't have any uh, problem here. We're scanning just below the uh, 0 dB line here with the tracking generator. We'll press this uh, set to uh, 0 offset for the tracking gener le uh, generator level and um, the level is 0 dBm. As you can see it's varying from 0 at these peaks down uh, 2 or 3 dB from there. Let's first get this into a normalized condition. We'll hit the normalize button here which doesn't appear to do anything. It just presets it so that when I hit the normalize button, oh, first I'm going to make the normalize reference level here 10 dB. That way it'll put it down here. And uh, then we'll hit the normalize button here. It'll sweep once and then it'll sweep a second time and put it all on zero. So there's zero dBm. There's uh, minus 70 dBm. And there's our normalized reference level. Take this off and as you see we've uh, gone up a little bit here. It's pushed everything up to put it on the zero line. So this is around 70 dB over most of this range. A little bit of uh, variation in this area which has been our problem area all along. Okay so if I was to take a 10 dB pad, you'd expect that this would show 10 dB down. I'll do that here. Okay, there's 10 dB. A little bit of ripple on it, but not much. Half a dB or something. Not certain. So, we're good there. 20 dB pad, we're good at that, I believe. Again, right on the line and uh, just a little bit of ripple. 30 dB pad. Okay, at 30 dB down, we're, we're still fine. We're at minus 30. We'll get the uh, 10 dB pad and put it on here to make 40 dB. So there we have uh, 30 and 10 is 40. A little more ripple up here than we had before, so it's starting to see the leakage down here, presumably. Put the 20 dB pad in here to put us at 50 dB down. There's 50 dB. A little more ripple up here, but not much. Still pretty good shape. Let's try 60, which is the 10 dB pad added to this group. Aha! Now we're getting a little more ripple all the way through because we're getting close to where the leakage is down here. And that is the basic problem in this unit. When you get down at the lower levels, the leakage starts giving you beat notes like this uh, as the phase goes in and out of, on the uh, sweep, presumably. But it's still usable. It's not a, a huge problem. And I have another set of pads here. This is the old uh, 1136 dB. Uh, 3 and 1 is 4 and 6 is 10. So I've got 10 dB of extra attenuation here. And with another 1 dB pad, I can do everything from 1 dB steps, uh, 1 dB steps from 1 to uh, 11. But uh, right now I'm just going to toss the 10 dB of extra in here and put us at minus uh, 70. 
which will be right at the noise, at or near the noise level. Ah, now you see the beat notes clearly here, in and out of phase, in and out of phase. So that's, uh, that's the bottom line right there. Anything down in that region under the 60 dB marker that I put in here may give you some grief. But normally we aren't uh, real concerned about that maximum on most things that we're looking at. All right, let's look at our, uh, put that aside and look at our filter here. Uh, I guess I have to take this out, put it over here. With this filter in, what do we get? Oh, very interesting. A nice little cliff here. And uh, we're down 70 dB. And interestingly enough, I don't see the problem here with the beat notes, which probably means that uh, this keeps going down to where it's more than 10 or 20 dB down. So there's no beat note between the leakage, which is right here, and the uh, actual response of this. So I'm presuming that this is down here. But even with the noise level here, you wouldn't be seeing it anyway, so it's not a big issue. All right, so let's find out where we are here. Get a marker. Number one is on and normal. And we'll uh, put it at, say, 7 megahertz. Uh, so marker 7 megahertz. There's the 40 meter band. At the, we have 0.24 dB of loss at the 40 meter band, which is fine. It's within the spec, I'm sure. Marker 2, we'll put it uh, 30 megahertz. That's the highest we do in amateur radio, at least. So uh, 2, we'll say 50 meg uh, 30 megahertz. Oh, wait a second here. Uh, marker. Normal. <laughs> Got to turn it on. Uh, and then 30 megahertz. There we are at 30 megahertz, uh, 0.19. So actually a little bit better at 30 megahertz. Let's try 40 megahertz. So we'll go to number three here, turn it on, and marker, and then we'll go to 40 megahertz. 40 megahertz appears to be the 1 dB bandwidth of this particular filter. So it's got plenty of headroom for uh, amateur radio for certain, and may even have enough headroom to do part of the uh, utility band uh, and public service band that's at 30 to 50 megahertz. But let's find out uh, where we get the 3 dB point by punching up number 4 here. And let's go to, say, 50 megahertz. So, marker, 50 megahertz. Ah, well, 50 megahertz is 35 dB down, as you can see here. So it doesn't do 50. In fact, we'll use the knob here to crank it down. Let's see where it does 3. Well, with the resolution and this wide of a span, 3.73 you'll have to do. It. That's at 45 megahertz. So that's as high as this thing could uh, potentially be used. More likely around 40 megahertz or maybe even 42, something like that. Let's see where this null is. Or notch, if you wish. Okay, looks like it's at uh, 72.59 dB down at 55 megahertz, which is channel 2 TV, uh, by the way, in the old scheme of things, uh, before HD. So this was designed to give a notch at the TV uh, low band frequencies where frequently 28 megahertz operation and, and even 14 megahertz operation would pr produce harmonics that could cause television interference. So there you go. This is the uh, low-pass filter made by Viking, and that's its response. Next we're going to look at the, this particular item, which is a uh, power attenuator, 50 watts handling power. Not sure what its upper limit is. We think uh, 
My recollection is that it goes up to 500 megahertz, but it might not. We'll see what it does for attenuation over this uh, passband that we have in the background. And uh, it has 30 dB of attenuation between this input and the output. It's made by bird, uh, uh, the bird watt meter people. Uh, it's very old, but it seems to still work very, very well. So let's, let's see what it does. Okay, there it is, and uh, this is what it does. So we have a little bit of ripple up here, as we indicated further uh, earlier. Uh, we can find out what that is by hitting peak here. There's the uh, top of it, minus 30.2. So uh, that's the least amount of attenuation it has. We can uh, go to marker number uh, one, let's say. And, uh, well, actually, what we can do is leave it on 4 and go to delta and find out uh, how low this is. It's about 1.28 dB down. So 1.28 dB of ripple on that thing, peak to peak. So that's not too bad. And as you see, we do pretty well all the way across uh, from 0 to or 1 to 500 megahertz here. So this looks like it would be a, a tool that would be fine for the uh, amateur bands up to 450 megahertz or even into the commercial two-way bands at least up to the 50 watt level. Previously I also made a little adapter, uh, 30 dB adapter, uh, just out of stuff I had around my shack, and it's made out of parts that don't really go up very high in frequency, I don't think. We'll find out exactly what it does, however. Taking these off because I don't need them for this particular item, since it has its own Here's the input, so we'll put it on the source. So it's going in through this uh, 50 ohm load and some resistors to tap off some energy to uh, give us 30 dB down from that. Oh yeah, as you see, it's uh, going up in frequency. I mean, in uh, level here as we go all the way through here. This is both capacitive coupling and the fact that most of these resistors are becoming inductive. So you have inductive resistors here and here. And it was never designed to be used at UHF really. Um, but let's see what we've got. We have three markers already set on here. So what we can do, well actually uh, we'll bring the fourth one down to something reasonable. Let's find uh, the 27 dB point, which would be 3 dB up. Uh, there's where it's lost 3 dB of its uh, attenuation. And uh, marker 1, as you see, is uh, at 29.84, pretty darn close to 30. Marker 2 is at 29.55, still pretty good. Marker 3 is at uh, 40 megahertz and is 29.39. And uh, marker 4, let's put it at uh, 148, the top of the 2 meter amateur band. 148, what happened there? Oh, delta, normal. 148 megahertz. So at 148, I have about 26 dB of... Uh, attenuation and probably not a very good match. So this doesn't look like I'd want to use it on 2 meters. I might use it on 6 meters. That would be 50 megahertz. Well, 54 at the top of the band. There we're still in pretty good shape. We're less than a dB off. So it's probably reasonable to use this uh, 
at, on the low frequencies and all the way up to 50 megahertz for about 10 watts, which is what this all adds up to, maybe 15 watts, don't know. So little homebrew item that I put together that works sort of. So that's a quick and dirty uh, uh, check of some items that I have around my shack that uh, shows you what uh, other filters do and so forth. And uh, so far, everything I've thrown at it, it's done fairly well. And uh, no, no surprises. Let's put it that way.